Most salts, which are ionic compounds, are soluble in water, and we've learned in the past that they do not affect the pH of the water solution when they dissolve. And here's an example here. So we've got KCl breaking into some K ions and some Cl ions. So even though this is occurring in water, these two ions are not reacting with water to form new compounds. So what is not going on here is this K is not in any way, shape, or form reacting with water to form any of the stuff over on the right side. And at the same time, we've also got the Cl right here, which is definitely not combining with uh, the water here to make some weird stuff. So this is not what's happening here when this particular salt dissolves in water. However, this is not always true. There are a few compounds out there. There are some ionic compounds, some salts, that when you put them in water, they actually do form acidic or basic solutions. And we call this hydrolyzing, which means that you put the compound in the water, it starts to break down, and then one of the ions actually then goes and is, I guess is a secondary reaction, reacts with the water. So here's an example here. This is KC2H3O2. This is potassium acetate, and it is soluble in water. But when you put it in there, it forms a basic solution. How is this possible? Well, the first thing we need to do is investigate how this compound breaks down, which is what I have displayed here. We've got the potassium ions and the acetate ions over here. And as discussed, this potassium is not going to hydrolyze uh, with water. However, this acetate ion is actually going to do that. So what we can do is we can rewrite that acetate ion down here and we can combine it with water. I've written it as HOH instead of the traditional H2O, but it's still exactly the same. And then we've got this double arrow going on here. And uh, what's actually then going on here is this hydrogen right in the front is making its way over here to that acetate ion. So we're forming our vinegar compound and we're forming our OH. And it's this OH that in fact is causing our basic solution when this one is put into water. Let's look at some examples here. So NaNO2 is a basic salt. Determine the pH of the solution when the concentration is 0.025 moles per liter. So it's basic. We're going to expect our pH to be greater than 7. So first thing we should do is take our compound and break it up into its two ions. And as we previously discussed, this sodium will not hydrolyze in water. But this NO3 is actually the culprit in this case. <clears throat> so we'll write that with water. And then what we'll do in a sec is we'll take this hydrogen and we'll bring it on over to be part of this nitrate molecule. And there we go. We've got our basic OH. Ice chart is going to be the next thing here. And here is our ice chart. And I've kind of jumped ahead. Let's uh, not forget we've got 0.25 for our concentration. So that's why that is going there at equilibrium. Um, the two products are going to increase plus X. And of course, this one's going to decrease. And we've got our expression. Now, what we're going to have to do to proceed here is because this is a basic uh, compound or whatever, we're going to need a basic result. We're going to need to find a KB value. Now, sometimes you're not always able to find a KB value for NO2, but you should just be able to look it up. However, sometimes they just give you the KA of it. Let's not forget that KW is in fact equal to KA times KB. So, yeah, that says Ka and Kb. So you could always rearrange that formula if you knew Ka to actually find the Kb if you couldn't look it up. So taking our, uh, our equilibrium expression, we've lost water because it's in the liquid state. It's not involved in this equation. We're going to plug in all our numbers. Now there's going to be, uh, well, we got this x on the bottom here to deal with. The, uh, at this point, you can do the 100 rule, which the 100 rule, which says you take your, um, your concentration 0.25 and divide by the KB value. And when you do that, if you get larger than 100, then you can actually ignore this X. And by the way, that's exactly what happens in this question. So I've rewritten it without that X that used to be right down there. So next step is just going to be some cross multiplying. So we're going to have this particular value here 
cross multiplied against our 0.25. And we also are gonna have uh, x squared up top. So we're actually, and again, I've jumped ahead in the math here, we're gonna have to multiply these two terms together and then take the square root. And why is that? Well, it's because we had an x squared earlier. So when we do that, we get 2.34 times 10 to the minus six. So we're not done yet though. We still need to do something with this value. And keep in mind, this is KB, this is OH. So as we proceed here to the next step, we're actually kind of determining the POH, which, is, which isn't what we want, but we're just gonna take the negative log of our answer. And when you do that, you get an answer of 5.6, which does check out on the POH scale. But this question did say pH, which means we're gonna have to do one last step where we take 14 and subtract our answer of 5.6. And when you do that, you should get a nice basic answer of 8.3 where we have an acidic solution result. So NH4 dissolves in water to form an acidic solution. Let's remember that throughout the whole question. And we've got a, we're gonna determine our pH. So first step is to write our equation. We've already talked about Cl minus is not reacting with water. However, this compound here is gonna be the culprit. So we'll take our NH4 and react it with water. So we're gonna take one hydrogen from here Bring it over to that side. Remember, our goal is to create the H3O plus ion because this is acidic, and that's how we do it, by moving the hydrogen from that side to that side. Ice chart time. So I took our uh, molarity, put it there, our typical changes. And now at this point, we need to look up a uh, Ka value for the ion in question. And uh, again, if you're not able to find, if you're able to find a Kb, you can simply figure out your KW, well we know our KW, and so you can just rearrange to find KB. And there you go, sorry, KA I should say. <clears throat> okay, so, um, ignoring that final answer at the bottom right now, we've got our expression. We're gonna substitute our numbers in. You can do the 100 rule to figure out if we can ignore this x here, and good news is we can. So we can proceed by doing that. And then it's just gonna be a matter of rearranging. So uh, we're gonna have an x squared up top here, and we're gonna have 5.8 times 10 to the minus 10 multiplied by uh, 0 0.25. And then of course we'll square root that. And we get our answer at the bottom here of 1.2 times 10 to the minus five. Since we're asked about pH, we're gonna take that value and substitute it right into our log formula, and we get our acidic uh, answer of 4.9.